lightweight, compact and super versatile. Since now, that's my gimbal of choice for 80% of shooting scenarios. Let's review that. So guys, here is a straight example from Mosa Aircross S and Sony A7S III with 50mm lens and a little bit of post stabilization. So as you can see, the results are pretty decent. I also had a reportage shoot in the airport with the A7S III in 4K50 and Tamron 17-28 and I was using the Mosa Aircross S. Unfortunately guys, I cannot show you the footage because of the NDA, but still you can see that it's very smooth and my clients were super happy and I'm more than satisfied with the results. And on that shoot I was using this gimbal like half of the time and I had zero issues and enjoyed the results with a little bit of post stabilization. Here are some specs of this gimbal, it's super lightweight, the payload is also ok, about 10 hours of battery life and a lot of different features like dolly zoom, time lapse and inception mode. And one of my favorite features of this kit is this carrying bag or a backpack let me say, because it can fit a camera, a lens your audio equipment, a camera like Sony FX30 will be a perfect match, here is the A6300 in the cage, kind of the same size as the FX30, Viltrax 13mm lens, and also some audio equipment like wireless leveling microphones and all that, and we even have some space for an extra lens if you want to. So you can take this bag with you with camera, lens, gimbal, sound, and just carry this setup with you without having to bring a huge backpack. Awesome, awesome bag, love it. Also in the kit you'll find an L bracket with this little release mechanism and some protection as well, so you won't lose your camera. And if you want to mount your camera horizontally, you'll be using this L mount bracket. Here is a little tripod feed, very good quality plastic, super sturdy, love the build quality of it as well. Here is a phone clamp and you can use this gimbal of course with your phone, with your GoPro, Insta360 cameras, whatever. It just holds everything perfectly. Here is a little tripod plate, which is Arca Swiss compatible. It's also very versatile, you can use any Arca Swiss plate if you want to. Here are a couple of cables, USB-C for charging and also two camera control cables, micro USB and USB-C. And on Moses website you can see which cameras are supported and which functionality is available. Without L brackets, tripod feeds and camera plate, it weighs only 565 grams and I've been using it with this camera which is Sony A6300 in the cage and as you can see it's more than a kilogram. No issues whatsoever with holding more than a kilogram of weight. I would not put uh, here something like one and a half kilograms, but more than a kilogram, just fine. So on the right side we have the charging port, a power button and a lock. We have locks for all three axes. There is a little display, which is very easy to look at and navigate. The M button on the left side, as well as the little joystick, which has different amounts of responsiveness. So the faster you push it, the faster it goes. Quarter 20 thread on the bottom, of course the trigger and the record button on the front. Here are the tightening mechanisms for your axis, also pretty good quality. One more axis lock, also the camera control port. I really like the overall build quality and the uh, engineering put into this gimbal. Very good job by Moza. And look at this gimbal in my hand, it's very compact. Also there is an app by Moza and you can control your gimbal with the app. As you can see right here we have remote control, we can start and stop recording if we connect the cable. You can go into selfie mode, you can change the speed of pan and tilt and it can go super slow for kind of imitating the time lapse if you want to. Also there is a mirroring mode with your phone or mimic motion mode and I'm not really liking this mode because it's a bit too jerky in my opinion but still it is there if you want to. Also the app shows you the battery life and we have a lot of different motor settings. For instance we can change the mode like pan tilt follow mode, uh, FPV mode, all lock mode and all that but you can also do it with the gimbal itself without opening the app. We can change the follow speed, 5 steps, we can use the sport gear mode so basically it's going to be a bit sturdier and faster. Also we have some joystick settings like the joystick sensitivity from 5 to 1. I prefer to stay at 1 of course. We can reverse the joystick as well and we can go into advanced settings like fine tuning the level if your horizon is not leveled properly. You can also upgrade your firmware with this app and all in all it's a very simple to use and easy to understand and navigate app. We have a lot of creative capabilities as well, like motion time lapse, tracking mode, and you can use this gimbal with your Moses Slypod, for instance, to combine 
the movement of the slider and also the movement of the gimbal itself so it's a very nice combination guys as i said you can use the gimbal without the app so one push at power button goes to sleep also if you double tap you'll change the uh, speed of uh, rotation basically or responsiveness of the gimbal so you do not need to go into the settings if you press the menu button once you'll go into different menus and you can use the joystick to uh, move around you can choose the mode you can choose the speed you can uh, basically do an auto tune mode you can dial in the manual settings you can reverse the joystick and the, change the sensitivity of this joystick so it's super easy super intuitive it's not a ton of menus so i like that i don't need to go into the app all the time and if you double tap the mode menu you'll switch between modes between lock fpv pen follow and pen tilt follow triple tap on the trigger and you'll enter the selfie mode double tap on the trigger and you'll recenter the gimbal and if you lock it like so you'll lock all the access go into lock mode so now guys it's time for the tests so guys, right now it's a little vlogging test. So my setup right here is the Ronin S with Sony A7S III and Tamron 17 to 28, set to 21 millimeter to match the other camera right here. And the steady shot is turned off. And this setup is more than three kilograms and it's pretty tough to work with it and to hold it like so. So right here we have the Sony A6300, no built-in image stabilization with Tamron. Uh, it's not Tamron, it's Viltrax 13mm f1.4 with the ND64. Here I have the polarization filter also to cut a little bit of light. And also I have the cage on the Sony A6300 so it matches the Sony FX30. Whew, it's very, very heavy to match the Sony FX30 in terms of weight. So let's turn around. And this setup with the Aircross S is more than or kind of around two times lighter and it's much easier to hold to be honest so how do you like the footage guys from both of those share your thoughts in the comment section below and i forgot to mention that i have a receiver from godox uh, move link mark ii little lav mic on the a7s3 and nothing on the a6300 but i doubt it's gonna make some major difference so here it is and both gimbals are calibrated with auto calibration. They are balanced super correctly and precisely. And also the uh, pan tilt mode is set to the lowest sensitivity possible. So it's the smoothest. The smoothest of what's happening with my speech today. It's in the smoothest mode possible because I like smooth motion. So let's continue testing. So guys, right now we're doing a ninja walk with those two gimbals. How do you like the footage? On the left we have the Ronin S and Sony A7S III. On the right we have the Moza Aircross S and Sony A6300. And I'm doing my best in ninja walking. So now let's turn a little bit. So we're in pan tilt follow mode. On the Moza Aircross S it says TF, so tilt follow. But it's also a pan tilt follow. It's just two letters on the screen that show up. So how do you like the footage? And yeah it's doing okay in my opinion and now guys we're running also with the ninja walk i'm not running faster with either of the gimbals that i use let's turn around a little bit so how do you like the footage i run with my knees bent so i don't do a faster running but what do you think we have pretty big bumps and the a6300 has terrible rolling shutter so will it appear right here let's have a look i run with my knees bent so I don't do a faster running, but what do you think? We have pretty big bumps and the A6300 has terrible rolling shutter. So will it appear right here? Let's have a look. So now guys, let's test out the smooth pan and tilt mode. So let me turn both gimbals a little bit to the right, then a little to the left, then up, then down. So yeah, it looks like it's doing a very good job at smooth motion. Both of those, they are set to the maximum smoothness, as I said before. So I'm pretty satisfied with the results. And now let's test out the joystick of the Moser Aircross S. Here it is. So it's very, very smooth and gentle. And it responds to your fast movement and to your slow movement, like so. Let's try up, let's try down. It's also set to the smoothest setting, so you can do some smooth transitions with those.
Also, Moza has an inception mode, so let's test this out. I'm turning it with the joystick, and as you can see, it's doing a good job, like so. And you can also do it in the other way. So here's an inception mode with the Moza and walking. And now, guys, we're testing it out with 50 millimeter lenses. I mean, 35 millimeter on the A6300 and 50 millimeter on the A7S III. So here are the lenses: 50 millimeter by Young and 35 millimeter by Sony. So here we are. How do you like the smoothness in the footage? I'm also walking very, very calmly with my best, <laughs> you know, a ninja walk. So. This is how it looks like on both gimbals. We're just following this little guy with his baby. How do you like it? And now, guys, I'm trying to keep this little tree in the center of the frame. It's pretty tough to do with the gimbal in both hands. But you'll see the result for yourself. So, how do you like the footage? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. And guys, as you can see, you can use Moza Aircross S with your smartphone. For instance, iPhone 13 Pro Max in the huge and heavy case by Freewell, Freewell Sherpa. And also the anamorphic lens with an ND filter. And this whole setup with the holder and with the tripod plate weighs this much. So I'm showing it to you on the B-roll. So you can use this system with this gimbal, but it will be very hard to use it with some other smartphone gimbals like OM5 from DJI or some other lightweight gimbals. But this gimbal from Moza has zero issues with it. And also you can mount it horizontally like I show you here with this L bracket, but also if you remove it and you mount straight to this part, you'll be able to shoot vertically as well with your camera or with your smartphone, no matter what, it'll hold easily i'm not shooting a lot of vertical stuff so that is why i'm not using it so yeah zero issues i'll show you some b-roll as well and now guys i'm using the standard camera app with an anamorphic lens and uh, the stabilization of iphone 13 pro max is already great but combined with the gimbal it shall be it should be <laughs> very good so guys, you saw everything with your own eyes. How do you like the stabilization of Moza Aircross S? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. And now let's discuss the price and value of this kit. The price of it is $260 and in my opinion, it's more than reasonable. So let's have a look. So here we have the Moza Aircross S for $260, also Moza Mini P, which I've reviewed previously on my channel and I really like this gimbal for $200, so if you're a bit tight on the budget, Moza Mini P is also a great option. At the bottom left we have Zhiyun Crane M3, the basic standard kit for $330 and it used to cost $40 more, so it's a bit more pricey. And I didn't really enjoy this gimbal because the stabilization itself wasn't that good. And the DJI RS3 Mini is $370 with a super basic kit with no carrying bag whatsoever, so yeah, it's much more expensive, it's more than $100 more expensive. But if you want me to make a comparison between the RS3 Mini and the Moser Aircross S, you can write it down in the comments below. To conclude, I'm more than satisfied with this gimbal and I'm gonna keep it, because my back is so tired of carrying a 3.5kg Ronin S with a Sony a7S III and Tamron 17-28 during reportage shoots, for hours and hours and with the right balance and smooth settings and a bit of post stabilization I get great results with Moza Aircross S. And of course I'd rather tap a couple of buttons in post than holding 3.5 kilogram monster setup for many hours. For super precise work and heavier lenses I'll be still using the Ronin S but it's like 10 to 20 percent of my work. And if I plan to go on vacations or to travel of course I'm not gonna be carrying the Ronin S with me. But Moza Aircross S? Why not? Highly recommend you pay attention to Moza Aircross S because of its versatility, price, performance, functionality, compact size, low weight and great kit. I think it has a really good value. So what do you think guys? Which gimbal do you use and would you prefer Moser Aircross S or would you rather pay for a DJI RS3 Mini for instance? Please share all of your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you did enjoy this video please smash the like and subscribe buttons and the notifications bell. And I'll see you in the next video guys. Take care, bye.